Hi Libra, this is your uh, August of 2022 reading. Uh, my name is Vicki Verley and you can find me at VickiVerley.com. We have this, the decks that we're going to use today are here, but I, first I want to talk about this uh, little bonus content. We're going to talk about this Uranus uh, moon thing that's happening here, the Uranus north node thing that's happening here. So you guys are Libras. This is you over here. Now this part will really apply mostly to rising signs, but um, you can watch it. You may get a message out of it. You never know. The other part of the reading is going to be for sun, rising, moon, or anybody with prominent Libra. But here we go. So what this is all happening in the sign of Taurus. You know, so it's in your, uh, what, your seventh, your eighth house here. So eighth house is taxes, sex, death joint finances, things like this. It does have to, it's very much a partnership house though. It's more about your, your. this is the, you know, the partnership, but then this is like sex from the relationship, if it's that type of relationship. This is, um, you know, the money, the joint finances from the relationship. Could be an investor. Um, so it does have to do with money, sex, death, taxes, <laughs> kind of some heavy things. But the North Node is pulling us all into our collective future. It's pulling us all into a direction where we are in line with our soul's purpose, aspiring to our true north, connecting with our true north. Um, and Uranus is the planet of freedom. So Uranus kid, you know, wants to free you from anything that's inhibiting you from going in this highest direction. So in your case, it highly likely it could have to do with partnerships also considering because Saturn is squaring this and Saturn's coming out of your fifth house of love and romance so some of you could be dealing with some big relationship stuff it could be that you know the relationship is ending or but it's definitely changing your relationship status or your status in this joint finance thing is changing because um, Uranus brings change you are in harmony with this in, in both ways, in, in, because you have a connection to Aquarius because it's your trine, it's your air sign energy. But also you have a connection to Taurus because both of Taurus and Libra, your sign, are ruled by Venus. So there's this Venus connection too. Again though, it brings in love, money, changes, whatever's happening it could be, you know, it's, it's, it's taking you towards your highest good. So if things may be coming to an end, you may be seeing some things falling by the wayside. That's only to clear the way, to clear the way so that the, the positive higher uh, vibrational energies can come in with something much better. Um, the other thing is, um, you know, change is afoot. This could be you're freed from some mortgage, or so maybe some of you will pay off a mortgage, or some partnership, or some kind of thing that was, you know, like this Saturn, it could have been this very heavy onus on you. And you might be happily freed of it. It's just like, woohoo, I don't have to pay that bill anymore. Or I don't have to, you know, run this, my finance, my financial decisions by this other person anymore. You know, you're, you're expanding. It's expanding. It's getting more free. It's getting more enjoyable for you overall. That's the ultimate goal here, is for things to become more enjoyable for you with the fifth house. Um, but Saturn going through there isn't always, <laughs> Saturn can be kind of harsh, you know. Saturn's a kind of a hard teacher at times. It's, it's like Saturn pushes you by sometimes making things difficult, to, making it difficult to stay in old and worn out things that no longer suit you. And then, you know, the Uranus takes you by the hand and takes you into uh, the future. What is that song? Take you by the hand. Oh, it's one of my oh, from one of my bands. Take um, let me take you by the hand and take you to the promised land. Yeah, baby. All right, so here's the deck. So we're gonna do the card reading. I know it's mostly you tuned in for that, but this is a big deal. Everybody will be affected for it. The events that are taking place. And by the way, this is we're in it right now as I'm recording this at the end of July. It's, it reaches its peak or exact conjunction or its peak intensity right around July 31st to August 1st and then it'll be active all the way, I say, until at least August 11th when we have the Aquarius full moon. So it's, it's an act, you know, it's, it's like an arc. 
So we're in it. We're already in it. Some of these things may have already started happening. As I mentioned uh, on my astrology video, I know a lot of people don't watch it, but like we have that James Webb telescope come out. That's definitely the Uranus taking us into the future and everything. Okay. Decks we're going to use for this reading for Libra, Sun, Rising, Moon, or anybody with prominent Libra. Of course, the Rock and Roll Tarot deck. This is the third edition, the smaller one, which is really cool. A little the latest edition. And then we're going to follow up for the next portion of the reading with the... Hanson Roberts deck, an old favorite. Uh, then we're going to pull in a Beast Mistress Animal Oracle for your animal totem for the month. And then finally, if you are a Patreon subscriber, there will be four additional cards pulled, and we're going to be using the... Uh, uh, gosh, I can't even think of the name of it. The Pamela Coleman Smith, the Rider Waite Smith deck. There we go. <laughs> All right, Libra, let's get a shuffle going for our Libra friends. Uh, by the way, I am, you being Libra, so before I start, one more th a quick announcement. You are Libras, and the Libra Ingress is coming up not in August, but in September. And this is a very powerful time for everybody, but especially for your Libras. Uh, I offer these readings every year. It's kind of a check-in, a quarterly check-in to see the energetic uh, uh, concentrations or snapshot of the energy going forward until the end of the year. So that reading will be available for a limited time if you want to check that out. Let's get our cards going. This one wanted to come right away. So that'll be our first card. Two of Pentacles, Six of Cups, The Fool, Four of Pentacles, King of Pentacles, Six of Swords. I'm just going to read. You're, you're the first one I'm doing this morning, so I'm not quite set up quite yet. Okay, then we have Tower. Five of Cups, Death, and Queen of Rods in the outcome. So, you know, definitely you're going through some changes. But that's not a bad thing. I mean, when you get you do get some of these cards here. I mean, look, I just looked in the viewfinder to see what's in the frame here. Let's get some room this way and a little bit of room this way. Give ourselves some space here. Okay, yeah. I mean, you do have some pretty heavy-duty changes coming up here, looks like, for many of you. You do have the tower, you do have the death. Death does not necessarily mean that somebody's going to die, necessarily, but it does mean a big change is underway, for sure. Uh, Two of Pentacles, some of you are concerned about finances. There could be somebody who kind of has a hold on you, or that greed is really standing out to me on this uh, card. By the way, let that happen. When you see words and phrases standing out to you, that's the universe talking directly to you. This feels like somebody, a boss that's greedy, or, you know, with your eighth house activation there, it could be some business partner. You know, somebody who, who has control of your finances, and this, this is definitely something that you could be freed from at this time. Um, you want to make a new beginning. You want to make a new start. Um, there is some connection to the past that could be helpful. It's probably one of these two people here. Um, now, although this shows as a man and this is a woman, there's not the gender is neutral on these readings, so that doesn't mean uh, for sure that this is a man and this is a woman. It could be anybody. Earth energy, though. We're looking at Earth energy, uh, Taurus, Capricorn, Virgo. And this one, we're looking at fire energy, Leo, Aries, Sag. Well, guess what's happening in the month of August? We're going to start the month in the sign of Leo, and then we're going to move into the sign of Virgo, the Earth, fire, and then we're going to move into the Earth sign of Virgo right around the 22nd. So it might be a little bit later in the month till some of this stuff gets uh, ironed out or straightened out for you. You know, there's definitely something connected to the past. And just because maybe it didn't work out last time doesn't mean that it won't work out this time. Freeing yourself, the Iranian energy will also free yourself from limiting beliefs. This is also, you know, you making this journey of, you know, leaving the past behind, moving into the smoother waters. The word transition really stands out to me. So for some people, it might be an actual death. You know, that could be a thing. But hopefully that's not the case, you know. It doesn't have to be an actual death. And I hope that in your case it's not. Or if it is, it's somebody, you know, who's at the end of, you know, who's 100 years old and ready to go. <laughs> you know? Okay, let's see here. Well, this one flew out. So we're going to stop the shuffle and we're going to go. Here's what was happening in this part of the reading now. You're an air sign. So we're going to look. There's three adult cards in here that represent air energy. That would be the King of Swords, the Queen of Swords, or the, I keep wanting to say Jack, but it would be the Knight of Swords. So whoever of those cards that shows up first, that would be the card that represents you. And then we're going to look at the card surrounding that significator or that representation of you. And that's going to tell us what the energy is surrounding you. You're going to come through. Yeah, here you are. I knew you were going to be coming out soon. 
because I knew this part of that is, was for you. You're going to be coming. Here's that Four of Pentacles again. Twice. Five of Pentacles. Four of Swords. Strength and then Nine of Swords and then the Ten of Cups. Nice. Alright, so um, this is the card that represents you here. This is you, the uh, Queen of Swords. Whether it doesn't matter if you're what your gender is, this is your representation in this reading. Again, we've got this earth sign energy real close to you and it looks like helpful to you. It looks uh, standing above you, so maybe somebody who's like a supervisor at work or the person doing the hiring at the job, the potential job or whatever this is, but they're definitely going to assist you in getting more money, okay? Yeah, I like that you have both of these. A lot of people don't like put the Seven of Cups as a real negative card, like you're spaced out or whatever. I've always put the Seven of Cups as you're visualizing and creating your reality. And then this is the wish card, so your wish is going to be coming true. So start that visualization. Um, there's going to be a new moon in Leo, too. Not in uh, The new moon in Leo is going to be at the very end of July. So if you're watching this in July, or if you're watching this really before the 11th of August, that new moon is still active, okay? That's a great time to set your intentions. That's definitely in harmony with you. Uh, harmonious energy with the uh, fire and air, air feeds fire. Set those intentions, start doing your dreaming, and start right at this minute. You don't even have to wait for that moon. So right at this minute when you're watching this video. And, you know, there is struggle, but you are going to overcome it. And I love, I love, love, love what surrounds you here. Uh, Libra, I was going to call you Aries. So there might be an Aries involved in this. Uh, that fire energy might be an Aries. But um, here you are. Male or female, this is you, okay? You've got the Empress on one side and the High Priestess on the other. These are the Queen. These are the Queens of the Major Arcana, okay? They are not fussing, or neither one of them, neither the, neither the high, high Priestess or the Empress is fussing or worrying about anything. They are stepping into their power. Empress is absolutely in a time of major abundance, harvest time. She's drawing the energy. The High Priestess energy is in tune with your higher source and guidance. She's, she's following her North Star through and connecting with her guides. Some of you, there could be a pregnancy. This could be somebody, if somebody out there's had some miscarriages too, that could be the death thing, you know. Um, but this looks like there's going to be something really viable. You're giving birth to something viable, okay? Could be an actual pregnancy, you know, baby. But it could be a lot of things. Whatever it is, you've definitely been dreaming of it, and it seems like it could be after a time of struggle. There does seem to be financial and money things involved, though, too. So, um, you know, I really feel about this as like stepping into your power, stepping into this full recognition of who you are, not being in bondage and worried about, you know, this poverty, don't allowing this poverty mentality to come in because and worry and stress because you are aligned with strength and for the way these cards are configured this is your own inner strength this is your own inner perseverance is coming through but really it's not it's, this is not an outward energy of push 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 go 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 this is an inward this is gathering up your power this is calling back your soul fragments you know this is coming getting into your place of power and then you end up over here with this beautiful ten of cups energy so that's you know the mar it's the marriage card yeah but it also is great love happiness joy you go you've got the whole gamut here from the ace to the ten from nuts to soup the guides are saying <laughs> So this new beginning that is going to be a viable new course, because that's another thing with astrology. Saturn will not, um, and set, fifth house is also your house of children. So there is some that could be for some people out there who are trying to get pregnant. You know, I definitely got had my twins when I was having a fifth house transit. You know, a lot of times a fifth house transit will bring about a pregnancy. Saturn could be difficulties. You know. Uh, but anyways, uh, I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, she's just like stepping into her power. You know, this is a thing of you claiming your power and maybe being freed from these eighth house partnerships. You know, listen, you're not going to control my money anymore. You're not going to control me through sex or, you know, whatever else. You know, I'm, a, I'm going to take back my power here and I'm going to 
draw from within my reservoir of creativity and abundance that is our gift to all, all who are incarnate, the guides are saying. All right, let me jump over and let's get our animal totem card going again. I do have the special reading of the ingress and there's a bunch of other readings available too. What is our, al uh, our alien? Wow. <laughs> I got alien on the brain here because of the space telescope and uh, a few other things that I'm going to talk about. But um, we're actually talking about Libra right this minute. And what is our animal totem for our Libra for August? Yeah, the ox. The ox is definitely in their power. The ox is, is like, here I am, deal with it. You know, it's in your face. It can be stubborn, but it can just be determination, you know, and strength is the very first word on the card. Strength, endurance, patience, presence, presence. That's a very key word for this energy, okay? Clearing of karma, accepting what is. Standing strong and plowing through, elimination creates space for magic. So, yeah, this Uranus stuff in that death house, having the death card, there's death to something. It, hopefully it's not a person. I'm, I think for most cases it won't be. But there is a death to this, you giving away your power, which is a Libra thing. I mean, you guys are so sweet and caring, and you always want to be fair, and you always think about the other person. But, you know, sometimes it's like you're giving away your power, you know. So you're reclaiming your power. I might have that as your uh, headline here. Let me just jot that down really quick. Reclaiming your power. Yeah, because that is what this is all about. You're free from this uh, other stuff, and you, your power lies within you. And you have this resources. You have this uh, divine feminine energy. Whether you're male or female, there's this divine feminine is awakening within you. And that is the fifth house. That is the place of creation, all right? Real quick before we go, uh, it's back to school season. If anybody is going back to school themselves or even has children that are going back to school, I have uh, these awesome notebooks that are, have my, some of my artwork on it. It's under a different brand name of VB Created, which is my graphics uh, brand name. But you can find the link to it directly below or in my, on my website. Uh, they come in you know, lined or unlined. Journals are lined, and sketchbooks have no lines in them. Uh, but there's a, these are only a few of the choices that I have available there. So, I mean, they're only $5.99. If you have Prime, you can get them for free. So if you're going to be buying some notebooks at this time of year anyway, why not pick up a beautiful uh, notebook for yourself or your child or whoever? Last thing I wanted to talk about, I wrote this book. This is called my book, Starseed, A Pleiadian Tale of Love. And I actually wrote it 10 years ago now. I wrote it in 2012. And um, it's I wrote it under a pen name of VM LaRive, so it doesn't show up on, with my stuff on Amazon. Although I try to work that out, but it's not working out. So I thought I'd just come out and just tell people about it. I mean, it's rough. It's It was my first ever. It's a novella. It's 169 pages long, so it's an easy read. You could read it in an afternoon. Um, it's, you know, it's rough. It was my first attempt at anything. And the thing about it is I always saw it as a TV show, movie, or something. I always saw it on film, okay? So if anybody out there is looking for some kind of sci-fi thing, uh, you know, that would maybe be interested in working on this and getting it, you know, developed into a script or something, uh, please, you know, hit me up because I felt like it's time to really bring this out. Um, it is a paranormal romance, and I just wrote it in that vein because that's what was kind of popular at the time. That's what inspired me to write it because it was all this, you know, the Sookie Stackhouse books and uh, the Twilight, and there was a few other. There was a big surge of those kinds of stories going on at that time. So I thought, well, where's the alien? Where's the Pleiadian one? So, but I'm not a not really a romance reader or a watcher. You know, I'm I'm not into that kind of stuff. But there's a whole bunch of it was in you know woven into the story there's a whole bunch of cool uh, metaphysical stuff going on you know and Pleiadians and other dimensions and all kinds of cool stuff and there's more than what's in this book I have a notebook somewhere because I had planned to you know there was more information coming and the future storylines could have to do with we could get into walk-ins we could get into time travel you know so it's very metaphysical so I'd love to you know get it out there in some form or fashion 
Um, this needs a lot going over. It is rough, but I mean, it's readable. It's it's a it, it's a good story. So if, even if you're not into you know film or whatever, if you just are into sci-fi and or paranormal romances, you know, check it out. Uh, it's under a pen name again, VM Lariv. There's a link. Uh, you know, you can find a link on my website under the book section, but. Anyway, so we're going to move on to the next part for our Patreon peeps. If you want to get in on that, you can find the links below. Thanks so much for tuning in and all the things that you do to help my channel, like just by picking up some notebooks for you or your kids. You know, all these little things count, especially I would, you know, invite you to subscribe and the things that the interaction and the engagement with the video through liking, commenting and those types of things. Subscribing, that triggers that YouTube algorithm, so that's always highly appreciated. Powerful month, powerful changes. You're, bring, you're calling back your power, and there's an opportunity for you to be free of these outside influences. Really call back your power and come into your true happiness and your true soul's calling. Okay, Libras, have a great month. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you again next time.